Thanks, Sean. Yeah, with me today are two folks who are currently developing a technology that really stands to be a potential silver bullet for a lot of factors around packaging, sustainability, and a circular economy. Uh, with us today are Dr. Bruce Wealth, Professor of Packaging Engineering at the University of Florida, and Mike Ferrari, a PNG veteran who is now founder and president of Ferrari Innovation Solutions. So welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. So far today uh, in this program, we've heard a lot about uh, sustainability as it relates specifically to plastics and packaging. Uh, we've heard about lightweighting, uh, the move from multi-layer to monolayer materials, and the use of recycled plastic and RPET and so on. But Bruce, you mentioned there's a disconnect between society and industry and the role of plastics in this circular economy. Uh, maybe you can explain? Sure. Of all the problems facing our industry, this may be the most significant because we seem to be blind to it. We must realize that when we say reduce, reuse, recycle, society is hearing bad for the environment. It has now become common knowledge that plastic is bad, or at best a necessary evil. Meanwhile, our industry is crowing about monolithic plastics, polypropylene, recycled PET. Society is waging a proverbial war on plastics, and brand owners are rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic. Unfortunately, it seems that corporate chief sustainability officers are creating policies that are reinforcing this war on plastics. But is there a chance to gain alignment? Uh, can we win this supposed war on plastics? Yes, of course, but we won't win by extolling the virtues of plastics. We will win by solving the problem, but we will need to start by being honest about what the problem is. The good news is that the problem is not plastics. The problem is litter and waste management. Litter is a complex problem but one we can mitigate with improved waste management strategies, policies, and infrastructure. In terms of strategy, we should seek to put landfills out of business. Recovery of raw materials from products and packaging that have reached end of life is the very definition of circular economy. This should be our goal. What we call sorting is a major source of misconception that drives the disconnect between society and industry. When material recovery facilities, MRFs, sort waste, they are mostly skimming off the cream of the materials, mostly clean and clear rigids and discarding the rest. Improving sorting has only delivered marginal benefits because we are simply improving the purity of the cream, but doing little for the rest of the waste. What we need are processes that can handle all waste. Finally, there is the issue of shifting responsibility for handling waste back onto consumers and producers. We are pressing consumers to sort their waste and we are gearing up to hit manufacturers with extended producer responsibility taxes. Both of these are proving to be bad ideas. Let's focus on residential waste for a moment. By law, we transfer ownership of our waste to the municipality. Municipalities enjoy a monopoly on the responsibility of handling our waste. Consumers pay taxes and fees to municipalities for these services. Yet blame for failures to properly manage waste is being foisted upon producers and consumers. It is my opinion that we will be best served by continuing to let producers innovate and produce, consumers consume, and municipalities should be expected to properly handle our waste. Instead of self-flagellation, what we should be doing is helping municipalities to evolve and improve waste handling practices and infrastructure. Clearly, society is demanding change. Whether folks know it or not, eliminating plastics is not the change they are demanding. Society primarily wants two things. One, to solve environmental litter, and two, renewable everything. Renewable energy, renewable materials, not just clear PET bottles. The good news is that we can solve two, renewable everything, and in doing so, we can greatly diminish one, environmental litter, by transforming the way we handle waste with robust and flexible processes. So there is a disconnect between society, uh, what society is demanding and what industry is doing, while brands need to be responsive to customers, it behooves us to play the long game by helping to solve the real problem. Our industry is enormous and could wield tremendous influence to get the resources directed towards infrastructure capable of sending all waste back to the circular economy. Okay, now two words that you uh, mentioned really stuck out and that's uh, robust and flexible technologies. Uh, what's available right now that fits that description? There are several technologies with varying degrees of robustness, but the leading contenders involve thermochemical conversion. Pyrolysis and traditional gasification are already being commercialized, but these technologies still require a high degree of sorting. Perhaps the most robust and flexible approach available today is known as plasma-assisted gasification. Unlike traditional gasification, plasma-assisted gasification uses electrically generated thermal plasmas as a source of heat. 
These systems are capable of operating continuously at temperatures that break chemical bonds of all plastics, paper, corrugate, food, and other organic and synthetic materials found in waste. It also melts down and recovers metals, glass, and other mineral oxides. While plasma-assisted gasification can accept everything in our waste, we would still look to separate certain materials that enjoy healthy recycling markets, such as easily accessible metals, and perhaps even clear PET, high-density polyethylene, and polypropylene items to meet demand for, of traditional recyclers. However, we need not worry about incidental metal and glass, such as foil layers and cartons and films, metal closures, tamper-evident rings, metallized films. All of these materials are acceptable, recoverable, and renewable by this process. Right, and how can packaging industry stakeholders get involved to uh, influence infrastructure investments that'll help win this war on plastics? Matt, thanks for this opportunity. Bruce mentioned a holistic approach as a, a complete transformation of municipal solid waste, not just plastics, and that's how we get to the circular economy. This would be a disruptive change to our infrastructure. And to get this done, will require the support of different groups working together, academia, industry, and government. We've held several meetings and started the Consortium for Waste to Sin Gas Circularity. And these the stakeholders include brands, suppliers, and financial entities. The role of the consortium is to provide influence on making better choices in solving the problem to create a true circularity with all waste. The timing is right. This pandemic has increased the use of packaging materials, and the industry is pledging for the use of more recycled content that isn't currently available. This transformation will create that content. And 85% of our municipal solid waste is rich in carbon, as Bruce mentioned, and it's just waiting to be transformed into methanol from recycled trash. So what should people listening here uh, do? What can they do? Please contact myself, Mike Ferrari, or Bruce Wealth, and we can share more with you, and that will be your way to support this fundamental shift for a holistic solution to the problem.